So it's been almost two weeks since the Cool album has been released. I'm curious because it's six years, obviously, since the previous record. A lot has happened in that time. Uh, is the putting out of the record a major difference in between when you did it this time and last time? Is it is it a different kind of feel? I don't remember. Um, yeah, it was like so long ago. I feel like I <laughs> barely remember what even happened. Uh, and, and, you know, like when I Want to Grow Up came out, Instagram, I think was a thing, but I wasn't really on it. I didn't right. use it at all until like 2019, maybe. Gotcha. When I finally like jumped on, on board with that, but, um, so I don't have that like a uh, pictorial timeline to go back to and be like, what was happening at that right. point? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I don't really remember. Um, I know I had an album release show in LA. Yeah. That was very fun. And uh, there was cake. Oh, well, that's and, always good. That's always yeah. a plus. Or <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, although I don't remember eating any cake, but that's I'm true. sure I must have. I'm sure you did. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, usually it's like, hey, the album's out. Now I'm going to go on tour like the next day. Right. And continue touring for the next six months to a year. Yep. And maybe longer. Um, but I am not doing any of that right now. Um, so I don't and, know. It kind of it feels weird. Yeah. And is that be COVID related decision? Yes. Good on you. Okay. Excellent. Uh, yeah. You got to take care of yourself and those around you, I'm sure. And I mean, here in New Zealand, we're just coming out of our second lockdown. We've been locked down for like five weeks here in Auckland because but uh you know nobody's dying or anything but we're trying to keep it that way yeah, <laughs> we're, yeah. We're, Good. whereas the states is a different kettle of fish it seems like uh it's kind of crazy yeah uh, anyway. everybody's on a different page yeah that's a fact yes all right so so what brought you to the point where you wanted to, to make another record and put this thing out um nothing really i just uh that's just what happens in, in my life yeah i don't know i make uh you know get get a bunch of songs going eventually there's enough to to make an album out of it out of it right do that and then uh just continue living my life and until the next one happens all right very good it sounds like a, a career arc of some sort i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean i uh i'm i guess i'm more focused on just making music and being creative in general right because it's kind of like that's who i am and so it's never really planned it kind of just happens and songs come to me as they come to me and sure there you go yeah okay so the uh, the uh, tracks that comprise the album when and where were they mostly recorded July of 2019 in Los Angeles. Ah, so two years ago. Yeah, over two years ago. So it was it was a pretty different world even then. <laughs> um, so, so tell me about the vibe of uh, were you in? Was there a lot of people bustling around, and was it exciting, or was it kind of chilled, or what? What was the feel? It was very chill. Uh, I don't really like. Um, I don't like large groups and I don't like strangers. Okay. So I don't, I don't like uh, a lot of people bustling around me at any point. Uh, um, I try to, I try to avoid that type of energy, but um, yeah, it was pretty much just me, Gordon Raphael, who produced right. uh, my friend, Brendan Etter, who drummed and mixed the album. Right. And then friend Aqua, who's a hip hop producer in LA. Yep. He was around for most of it as well. All righty. So very, very chill group. Well, we'll start with Gordon. So uh, how did you come about choosing him and what kind of conversations did you have going into making the record about the sound and the approach and all that stuff? I had a very short list of producers that I thought it might be cool to work with. Right. Um, and I, I was listening to the demo for I Believe in Love at one point, and that's when I just 
something about the guitars on that song in my demo just screamed the strokes to me. Right. And I'd always been intrigued by um, those first two albums and intrigued by who had produced them. So I was already familiar with him, um, but obviously didn't know too much about him. He's kind of a mysterious character. Okay. Uh, not like one of these like Joe, Joe Ciccirelli's or whatever. So yeah, I was like, oh, like this song reminds me of the Strokes. I should have Gordon do it. Like, I wonder if that would be a possibility because if so, that would be really, really cool. Right. And so I told Hardly Art and they already had an in with him, contacted him. He was on board. Cool. And yep, yeah, started chatting by Skype. I think he was living in Berlin at the time. And um, uh, we had a lot of really good conversations. I, I sent him my demos and he really liked them. Um, I think the most important conversation we had that really helped shape the sound of the album was um the one where he told me to just be my be myself on the record and to use um <laughs> sorry that sorry about that um and to just use the same guitar sounds that I had used on my demos right ah he cool. thought they were very unique and that's what made me me so uh-huh so you mentioned I Believe in Love, which is like the ninth track on the album. It's all, I think it's the longest track on the record as well. And it's also the noisiest track on the record, I think. <laughs> but that's cool. Um, so tell me a little bit about how that came together and where that came from. disillusioned with love and marriage and the um the expectation of society that women are supposed to be married and start having kids by a certain age uh, yes. and being well past that age and still not having that even on the horizon yeah um, so that's something that i think about a lot and despite all that i do still believe in love and i do still hope that true love is in my future at some point mm -hmm. um right. whenever that may be i'm here for it um and uh yeah i don't know the noisiness the jammy noisy thing at the end i think yeah. kind of sums up the feeling of like this is something i really want but i'm really um i'm frustrated and and angry and sad about it as well I see. Well, I guess that kind of relates to the the topic of the previous song, How Much Should You Love a Husband and or Wife, as the lyrics progress. Uh, <laughs> have, have you gotten much reaction to, to a song like that? Do, do your fans kind of contact you and tell you what they're thinking about the stuff? Right, right, right. So have you had a near marriage experience or no? No. no okay. <laughs> not that it's any of my business, but you know, I mean. <laughs> no, definitely not. All right. And obviously the other the song that uh, comes to uh, up and is I Want to Be a Dog, which is, you know, obviously the, uh, kind of a takeoff on an Iggy, at least a, a title. Um, is that what you had in mind when you were writing it or you just, do you have a dog? I 
don't have a dog. No. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's that's kind of why because um I was able to I lived with dogs though for years right. and years, but I wasn't their owner, so it kind of gave me an opportunity to look at um, that relationship of like dog ownership through, from an outsider's perspective. Right. I was too deep in it and I could really just observe from the outside and um, just, just observe all those dynamics and what it was like to be a domesticated animal uh, who is basically alone. Right. Um, so, and yeah, that, also, the Iggy song, the Stooges song, was um, an inspiration. Yeah, well, uh, Iggy inspires us all. <laughs> Still kicking. <laughs> I have a friend who uh, who was a flight attendant, and she when she can't do that anymore because of what's going on, she became a dog groomer. And she started her own business. So she sends me photos every day of dogs that she has, <laughs> and it's just adorable. And these dogs are so... Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they're happy. They're getting like massages and stuff. They are very happy. <laughs> I, 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 I want to be a I dog. Could, <laughs> oh, that's the song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, so visually, I, I know you you've done a video for a Highway. Do you think about visualizing your songs when you're writing them, or do you think how they look to people? I've got nowhere to be. I see. Not at all. Not when I'm writing them. <clears throat> and uh, I actually, I don't know, I had a teacher long ago that, that um, you know, was, was just like reminiscing. He was, he was really old. Right. And he was reminiscing about the days uh, when you could hear a song on the radio and um, your own memories would be, would be called to mind. Sure. And um, with, with the advent of MTV and all these, you always have to have a visual with the internet and television. Um, and that's been going on for as long as I've been alive. So sure. it is kind of, um, to me, at least it is kind of, kind of sad that, um, hearing a song now for people conjures up an image that they provided for you. Right. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's necessary and um, it is kind of cool, but I don't know. I, I also do like that idea of people having their own memories and their own images and visuals when they hear a certain song. Right. Well, I guess if you're making a video and you don't want to kind of burn something into somebody's mind, you can just kind of do a performance thing and, and leave it at that and Hope that you weren't wearing anything too distracting. <laughs> True. Yeah, I like how in the olden days, um, it would be like it would be like a Beatles video or something, and that would right. be their music video, but it would just be, you know, a taped performance of them on Ed's Ed Sullivan or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I am really old, and I do remember those Ed Sullivan performances, and yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, they, they are cool like that. So. Um, what is, do you have a plan for, I get the feeling you don't, <laughs> I get the feeling you kind of play it by, by ear. It must drive your record company crazy. Ah, uh, they're pretty cool. They are they? <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're very, very chill. And, uh, they're kind of like me, which is, I think why I've been with them for such a long time. They're just, they, they know that, um, I'm, I'm kind of the boss. Right. And I, you know, I, um, I'm the only one who can really decide what's best for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so when you're putting these tracks together, my feeling was a lot of them start with a drum beat, a drum pattern of some sort, and then kind of, and, and some of the intros are rather lengthy, which would drive a radio programmer crazy because, you know, <laughs> good. You want to hit with a chorus right away. So <laughs> obviously you're not thinking in those terms either, but, uh, is there a reason why you build your songs up like that when you're in the studio? 
Well, um, I don't know if you know this, but um, in the early days, I always used a drum machine. Ah, I think I so, read that somewhere. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Not that I know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I love this question, though. So thank you for asking it. I've been waiting well, for somebody to bring it up. Okay. We're hoping. But um, yeah, so, so they all start with drum machine beats on my earlier albums. Right. Um, and I, for this album, I kind of wanted it to bridge that gap between drum machine and live drummer. Right. This album, Cool, does have a live drummer, but, and that's another reason why I went with Gordon Raphael, because I wanted somebody who understood that, like, that um, aesthetic of, of having, like, a human drum machine yeah. back there. So all my, de- all my demos are still made on drum machines, and that's kind of the easiest way um, to just, like, build it. You start with the drum beat, yeah. and then you bass and then guitar and so it just came really really naturally and i love it i think that it's it kind of makes it come full circle for me right so your drummer brendan he must have to kind of at least be on the same wavelength that you are as far as when he hears your demos and takes it from there right um brendan is just an awesome musician he's actually a jazz musician and Uh composer right and um, he's an amazing drummer, and I think he was just really excited to sink his teeth into a new project that was outside of his usual jazzy realm. Right. Um, and we've been we've been good friends for a long time. So, yeah, I mean, he was kind of like doing me a favor. It gave us a chance to hang out, right. and I knew he would do a really great job. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like all these. Uh, genre lines are getting very blurred these days and you know people can i talked to a guy the other day who was supposedly a blue bluegrass musician but i mean it was classic rock it was uh, r&b ish it was all sorts of things that you know that yeah that's the way it goes speaking of which so you got your man aqua who's a hip-hop producer so what did he contribute to the project um he kind of just was like our consultant almost right. Um, and he and I had been working to get what he's just sitting there going, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a save. About, yeah. So he just kind of like consulted. He was a really good ear to have right. in the room. And just, you know, if we ever, um, had, you know, so, sometimes in the studio, you're just listening to the same thing over and over for so long that it starts to not sound like anything. Right. And we may have been close to it, but Aqua was a little bit more, on the sidelines. So whenever we had something like that, it was always great to just get his opinion and his feedback on whatever. Very cool. Very cool. So you're, you're doing live streams. The, are you doing actual live shows as well from time to time? I might. Um, I don't know. I have been thinking about it, but I think it would be, it would have to be very particular. Like, right. Yeah. No, like, I don't know what the next few months hold because it seems like everything's changing. <laughs> Rapidly. nobody knows <laughs> yeah it's... so i don't really know but um at this point i think to in order to play a show it would have to be like um at a at a place where no food or alcohol is being served Ooh. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. like is that the only way to make sure people are, are going to be wearing their masks the entire time yeah once that book starts coming out it's like shh, good luck so do you miss performing yeah. yeah. But you, you like living <laughs> instead, right? <laughs> yeah, I miss it. Um, I love to perform. I, I love uh, getting like that energy from the audience and meeting my fans is always great. And uh, there's just something really like I love making music, but there's something really special about performing live. Right. Um, a whole different experience that I do really miss. Have you ever been down to this part of the world? New Zealand, Australia. I have you have? I have I got kicked out? Oh, good. <laughs> I say, what'd you do? <laughs> I well, I didn't have um, the right visa. Oh. The uh, booking agent told me that that he had like sorted it out for me. Right. And it was all really like DIY punk, like very kind of last minute type of right. stuff. Right. Right. And 
I was leaving the next day. So all I, all I could do really was trust that he had worked everything out. I mean, I didn't, I never been to Australia before. Right. So yeah, I got there. I did have a layover in New Zealand, but it was a quick one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got to Australia, was not allowed to Man. come in. They took me away, uh, drove me to the countryside and and beat the hell the out of you. No. <laughs> yeah. Even with switches. No, they but uh yeah, I, I spent the night in a detention center, an oh immigration. Jesus. Yeah. That sounds serious. Well, try try New Zealand again. <laughs> I, I, I would well, love to. We're a bit I might friendlier. Be banned, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. See. And are you thinking about the next record? No. <laughs> no way. I, I'm, I'm too, my plate's pretty full right now. I am working on some uh, really stupid pop punk songs. Oh, cool. For a potential new project, but. Why? Why are you working on stupid pump, punk songs? <laughs> just for fun. All right. You know, that's like, that's what's coming out of me right now. Cool. All, right. all my all my real songs are out out into the world. So, what's right. coming to me? I was stupid pop punk, and uh, you got to go with it. Sure, absolutely. Sounds like fun. All righty. Well, thank you for spend, sitting in your car and talking to me. Thank you. Are there people like thank around? You. Uh, they're going. What is that girl doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing donuts here. Oh, cool. <laughs> Excellent. All righty. Well, thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Marty. You too. Bye-bye.